Welcome to the Patty Time Burger Kiosk Tablet Walkthrough. This walkthrough is to demonstrate some of the technical and design choices that were made in the building of the Patty Time prototype. Uh, this prototype is not 100% functional, but it does a very good representation of what would be uh, implemented in the actual application once this is built. So uh, first thing to point out, a couple of major design features. Uh, number one is that we have built in uh, multilingual support and the way this is done currently is through the opening screen that has a choice of 15 different languages that can be uh, just simply tapped on to pick the right language. And it's, as you can see, it's saying hi or hello in various languages. Um, right now, we've only implemented English and Spanish, so if you click on one of these unsupported languages, like German, uh, it'll take you to a multilingual page that gives you various uh, information about it, the language being unsupported. So, since you speak German, you can see these are Sprachwörter, these are these Unterstütz, <laughs> which is uh, a convoluted way of saying this doesn't currently work yet. Um, anyway, so we do have gesture support, so you can slide, swipe right to go back, which is fairly standard, and you can actually tap on the uh, top icon here to be taken to the start at any time. Okay, so we're going to use the Spanish language uh, as a demo because I think it's more interesting and sort of fun because I don't really speak Spanish, so I had a fun time translating this. A uh, little bit about the design choices here. Uh, everything, my idea here for the Patty Time kiosk is that uh, this is a 100% uh, robot owned and operated kiosk. And so the cheeky little robots there are trying to make you feel comfortable about the fact that robots are taking over the world, but they're here to serve humans. And so that's the color text up here under the header, which gives you generally useful uh, but funny information about uh, what they sell here uh, is complemented by the cheeky robot graphic down at the bottom and you can see where he is giving you information about each particular screen. Uh, in this particular screen he's saying humans need to provide their name so that robots know how to talk to you. So you should enter your name here and then type or tap on the green check mark which is a fairly, con well, it is consistent across the application. You uh, click on the check mark to continue. Uh, other things worth noting are the bold yellow and red um, color choice uh, that was chosen here, and that is because red and yellow induce hunger. And you'll note that uh, most of your major fast food places use red and yellow, uh, you know, tomato and cheese to uh, in their design schemes. So here at the main menu, you can choose uh, from the three items that we have available, and those are hamburgers, drinks, and side dishes. Um, clicking on each one of these, or tapping on each one of these, will take you to the appropriate menu to make your choices. And here's where I'm going to point out that we actually have two different types of menuing inside patty time. One is a sort of guided selection process for more complex items like your burger uh, where you can pick your container and various toppings and proteins etc. And the other is a more simple you know add on the number of items that you want. So a good illustration of that is the uh, side dishes here. Uh, I should also point out that these graphics are uh, Apple emoji, so they should be fairly recognizable to anyone born in the latter half of the 20th century uh, who has access to a smartphone or a television. Um, if you don't know what these are, you can pretty much look at them and figure it out. Uh, so that's good. Uh, and you'll notice that the cheese is actually on top of the burger, which is how all normal people create their hamburgers. I'm sorry, Google. I don't know what you were thinking. Anyway, so let's look at the, the simple type of menu first, and that's the drink menu. So basically have three sizes, and you can read it here if you speak Spanish, where it tells you 
baby drink, medium drink, and large drink. And it's pretty simple. You get the instruction from the friendly robot. Tap the green to add and tap the red to subtract. I have noticed that the prototype is a little sensitive on uh, these hot spots that you create. Sometimes it takes a little bit of an extra click. Anyway, once you've made your selections, you can uh, click the green check and then it will take you to the cart review so you can see what you've added so far. Should note that I'm using variables inside the prototype to calculate all this stuff. And uh, you might think, well, what if we want to change the prices for a particular uh, area that we're in? Well, as it happens, we have implemented uh, some settings that you can access through a swipe and then entering a passcode. Let's see, I think it's this one, right? Oh, no, that's not the right passcode. Mm, all right. Well, let's try again. Okay. Uh, obviously, you know, in a real application, you wouldn't uh, <laughs> expose this out on the customer side. Uh, and obviously, this is not multilingual, but you could put that in there. Uh, I'm, what I'm going to do is actually change the price of the fruit cup. We'll make it 79 cents. Fruit's cheap here. Uh, and these changes take effect immediately. Uh, and we're going to use our swipe to go back, and we can see the price has been updated. Uh, okay, so from the cart, um, you can check out. Or pay, you know, reviews are, uh, or you can go back and add more items, and you can do that either by clicking here, or you can actually tap on any of these items up here, and it'll take you to that particular item. Uh, I'm going to do it this way, just to go back to the menu. It's fun. Uh, let's add on a couple of drinks. Oh, wait a minute, we already did that. Forget I said that. Let's add on some side dishes. And there you can see there's our updated fruit price that's different. Uh, so that tells you that it's basically dynamically loaded in the prototype, um, which is uh, convenient for building a prototype. Okay, so that's the first type of menu system. And the second is the hamburger menu. Um, now, the way I did this is more of a guided thing because you have more choices and it's a lot easier uh, from a user perspective to you know concentrate the different choices you have so you can only you only need to focus on the one thing you need and here he said humans need to choose a container for your hamburger and then choose choose the green or tap the green check mark uh, that's not a very good robot voice but whatever uh, I'm gonna choose a bowl because I like bowls and let's get the organic patty because that's what we normally think of when we go to a hamburger joint, right? But we're going <laughs> to spice it up a little bit and put bacon on it. Why not? Bacon and vegan patties. Those are amazing. Uh, okay, so you notice we can pick from uh, radio buttons and check boxes. Uh, one thing to point out I did notice about the prototyping tool is when you use a particular... Uh, widget which is the radio list or checkbox list and you change the size of the text it doesn't size or it doesn't uh, do a very good job of centering the checkbox um, with the text uh, you know if you make the text smaller the checkbox will be centered which is great uh, but I don't like small text on this sort of three to five foot tablet interface you know I want it to be you know, up front and bold. And obviously what we would uh, like to have is some, you know, because we have a tablet, we should also have a, a voice to text uh, turned on, or maybe we have uh, some completely aud uh, an audio interface might be cool too, since you can use Siri type technology, it might be neat. Anywho, uh, that's a digression there. So uh, we got cheese. I don't want any cheese on this uh, vegan patty because we're trying to stay vegan with the exception of that but let's slather it with barbecue and maybe some ranch make it a real nice hamburger or a vegan patty soup all right so we're good to go there uh, so let's go to checkout okay so here's our payment page and uh, you'll notice here uh, I put in this message here in case you wanted to cancel uh, you could go back and you'll notice I actually colored this uh, yellow instead of the normal white in the messages uh, so this is sort of simulating your payment um, terminal uh, obviously you'd have you know a little card swipe thing or maybe a 
an NFC device where you could put your phone next to it. But for now, we'll just simulate that using this button and we'll have to wait and then we'll see our payment gets completed. Hey, and now we've got uh, a little message here that says that our food is being prepared. And then this, you know, nice uh, note down here saying, Charles, your payment was completed and your order should be ready in 183 seconds. So uh, based on what the guidelines of the uh, uh, guidelines of the assignment gave us, it said, you know, should encompass all aspects of the restaurant experience, you know, welcome, ordering, selecting, paying, receiving, etc. Um, you know, I'm thinking from an automated kiosk perspective, you know, you're not going to have a, a tablet at every table. You might just have, you know, a row of kiosks sitting there and you just walk up and order. And then rather than having this screen here that helps you receive your food, um, you know, you maybe take a printed receipt that has your name and order details on it uh, so that you can go take it to a window. Maybe it has a barcode on it. And you can scan your barcode over at the other window. But in this particular uh, implementation that I've done here is sort of modeled on the Red Robin experience, which I wrote about in my discussion post, which is each table has like a little mini um, tablet at the, at the table that you can use to interact with the menu and uh, you know, make, make limited choices like for drinks and things like that. So, you know, this idea is based on the fact that every table has a kiosk sitting at it and you can place your order directly from the table rather than going to a central kiosk location and then coming back uh, to your table or maybe just standing around waiting for your stuff to come up at the serving window. So behind the scenes, there's basically a timer running that has a default time for each, um, you know, a default time based on uh, nothing, actually. It's just the default that's set for the variable uh, that houses the countdown, and I set it for 200 seconds. You know, I, ideally, you might have a little bit more logic behind that that determines what the wait time is based on you know the actual preparation uh, and where it sits in a queue and how busy it is and you might even uh, configure various components of the wait time based on the items in the order so if you order you know perhaps 15 burgers uh, and each of them takes you know three minutes to prepare so you've got a lot more time uh, to wait than had you ordered maybe three burgers so anyway, uh, there could be a lot more logic uh, that could be put into this that is probably less relevant to the, uh, the design of the interface, but more to the design of the application itself and then how you want to serve the user. For my purposes, I like you know uh, more detail about my order and knowing when it's going to be ready. So here it says, hey, tu comida esta lista. And I need to go to the pickup window and get tray number 99. So here this is the completion of the order. And now I can go over to the window and get my food. And, you know, maybe at some point later you'd add on like a tic-tac-toe game or something like that you can do. Or you can simply start over and place another order. So this concludes the walkthrough.